So Liverpool are through to the next round of the Carabao Cup. Their opponents are Fulham. They play the first leg at home and the second leg away, obviously. Um, it's an interesting game, though, and there is so much to cover from what happened against West Ham. So much crossover between Manchester United game and the West Ham game. So much crossover between the Liverpool squad depth thing and the amount of shots thing and the youth thing and the experience thing and the shape thing and the pressure thing and the belief thing and all these kind of things. We can cover all of that in this video. If you are a Liverpool fan or just a fan of football in general, then stick around on the channel. And if you want, you can hit the subscribe button. We're going for 85K. We weirdly hit it the other day and then I guess we just didn't please some people. Uh, let's talk about Curtis Jones first up and indeed that kind of tandem with Harvey Elliott. And then that, what's a try them? Tri what is three? Anyway, there were three people sitting behind Darwin Nunez, and even then there were probably more people just piling forward for Liverpool, and the shape looked so attacking. The shape was def definitely very much on the front foot, similar to the way that they played Manchester United, but the difference with a team like West Ham is that I think West Ham match up quite well matchup-wise and shape-wise to someone like West Ham. And West Ham also didn't choose to sit deep in this game, so it made Liverpool's life a lot easier. Although Liverpool also kind of sucked West Ham into it, Manchester United maintained a lot more of their discipline and maintaining an extremely deep low block. I mean, I say extremely deep, I mean like the deepest I've seen anyone play this season against Liverpool. And Liverpool clearly looked a little bit frustrated after this one. They clearly looked like they wanted to prove something and also they clearly looked like they quickly wanted to move on and prove that they aren't going to get stuck in a one game kind of uh, paradigm and make a whole season based on one thing. Really not what a football team is on. Really probably not what most Liverpool fans are on. And weirdly, after that Manchester United game, this was exactly the kind of game that you would want when going into a game like this one against Arsenal. Liverpool in the last match, of course, set themselves up with a number of long shots, probably a lot of speculative efforts, and they absolutely dominated the first 20 to 25, probably even 30 minutes in the game against West Ham, limiting West Ham to very few counter-attacks. Jarrell Kwanzaa and I think it was Verge at the back, right? Uh, played a pretty good combination. And I really like the combination tonight with Joe Gomez and also Costa Simicas on the other side. Both guys I thought looked super sharp. I thought both their feet looked fantastic. I really feel like Simicas has grown into the role over the last few months. And I also feel like Joe Gomez has grown into this right back cover slash really just doing a slightly better impression of what you would have wanted or thought that someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold would do if they were just fully a right back. Uh, and even then, he's kind of filled in for some of the Trent roles, even when Trent hasn't been in the team. But not in the same way and not in the same kind of progressive style, but still coming inside, doing a lot of the box stuff that you would want your right back to probably do, but not in the same way as Trent does. So again, giving Liverpool another option and probably similarly on the, uh, the you know, similarly to like a, a Trent working on improving his game, working on just being a better player and being able to provide for something like what Jurgen Klopp wants to do. Now, the reason I say it's different to what uh, Trent would have done is because Trent's role is it seems very complex. There's actually a lot more midfield versions of what he does rather than the width now, which Sobersly, mostly Salah, but also Harvey Elliott in this game also provided. When Salah came on, he was much more central. When Salah came on, he was much more like an actual striker rather than a winger or someone who's playing out wide and then cutting in. And I, I just enjoy Joe Gomez overall at the moment. And I enjoy Costa Simicas on the other side, though. But obviously there's this combination where both of them, I feel, you know, it's an element of trust, there's an element of history there in the team, there's an element of feeling, obviously, knowing that Liverpool have had those kind of shaky moments in the past with both those players. It, just getting over that because a new system changes that, new training changes that, a new approach changes that. Anyway, that wasn't even what I was on, but... I enjoyed Curtis Jones, I enjoyed the Harvey Elliott tandem, the kind of number 10 combination they had, but I think they probably had in mind for like a Fabio Carvalho and a Harvey Elliott, or a, a Sobosly and a Harvey Elliott, or a Sobosly and a Curtis Jones. And even then, it's like Curtis Jones sat slightly deeper, dictated a lot of the play, relied on Endo to cover quite a lot of that, that defensive stuff. He'd come back, receive, bring the ball down the field, carrying it really nicely. Originally, when I looked at the lineup, I thought, this is is this a 4-2-2-2? Is it a 4-4-2? Is it a 4-2-4? What are the combinations of play that we have there? 
probably all of them, but based on the different roles that they want the players to do. And in the moments, whether they're defending or they're transitioning or they're fully on the front foot, the players seem to have a very good understanding. And that was a lot less clear in the United game. Although uh, the reason it felt a lot less clear was probably, and I mean probably, because United, again, were just so deep. So when talking about depth, obviously I've picked up a lot of heat this week and picked up a lot of criticism for criticising Manchester United's depth. Obviously, Manchester United can play whatever tactics they want. And I think overall, we respect the fact that they don't have a full strength squad. West Ham definitely came in feeling a lot more confident, probably felt the need in being, in being compelled to play more on the front foot or at least trying to play Liverpool. Because, I mean, if you just sit deep, A, it's kind of boring, B, it's hard to get the players involved and C, it's probably your best chance of winning the game against Liverpool. I get it. Like, you know, putting Gerard Bowen up front, sitting deep and then counter-attacking can be effective sometimes. In fact, when Gerard Bowen went down the other end, we can talk about more about that later. But you get my point. Like, it's almost better to try and play Liverpool at their game, put them on the back foot. Because if West Ham had scored first, if there had been, like, this freakish moment, maybe Liverpool don't feel the confidence to go down the other end and take these speculative shots. Speaking of speculative shots, let's just talk about the type of shot that Liverpool took this evening. I was a lot more sceptical and of the volume of shots that Liverpool took against Manchester United. Obviously, I didn't get to do my post-match analysis because I was on F FCM, but I, I, did, I did think about this quite a lot. And I thought, so obviously, I've been criticising a lot for taking a lot of kind of speculative or what I felt were quite wasteful shots. Originally, some of them, of course, were sighters, as you would say. Some of them are shots across any other team's bow and some of them are also just him feeling his way into the game moving into the space working out where he can shoot from where he can't shoot from kind of finding his range if you like I'd imagine you can do that somewhat in training but then in a in a game scenario it's slightly different and this evening when he stepped onto the ball when he struck through it when he kind of had that similar to what I've been saying actually Ronaldo's uh, Ronaldo's kind of technique or the Ronaldo look in the shot is the fluidity it's the smoothness it's the uniqueness in the technique that Soboslai has Jamie Carragher kind of called that out as well. Don't forget where you heard it first, by the way, guys. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, of course, if you then go further than that, you can obviously see his impact on this game. I thought he was fantastic at winning the ball back. I think he was fantastic at initiating the press and the pressure in certain parts of the field. And it feels, even though there are a number of players getting touches on the ball, like Soboslai is one of the driving flotilla effect forces that push Liverpool forward and put them on the front foot rather than on the back foot. He's very good at transitioning play instantly from picking it up to it going the other way. Similar to Harvey, similar to Curtis, similar to Endo. Liverpool looking to get it from end to end as fast as possible. And all four of those players were able to ram the midfield this evening, make it very difficult for West Ham to play through it, win it back very quickly and push down the other end. So I've highlighted Curtis Jones, basically the entirety of the midfield, the two fullbacks so far. And I don't feel like we've really had to shout out Kelleher, mainly because he didn't have a lot to do tonight. But the moments where he was involved, a few moments where I felt there were some sloppy passes again, a couple of overhit passes, trying to work out where those come from, probably just a willingness to get forward. But overall, I felt that Kelleher and Liverpool in general were better in their control of the pass, better in their control and the weighting of the pass at least. There were a couple of times where I thought, why are we kind of playing our way into trouble here? Why are we allowing ourselves to be pressed by West Ham in this way? But again, trust your goalkeeper, trust your back line. And even when they rotated Kanate on and they put Kwanzaa over to the other side and there wasn't the same assuredness that you would get with the Van Dijk, it still was just a very simple kind of formality that Liverpool were going through. And I didn't mind it so much, if I'm quite honest. Um, Going into that kind of strikery area now, there have been a lot of questions over Hakpo, but also Darwin Nunez. It, they both started, which is why I kind of thought, is it a 4-2-2-2? Is it a 4-4-2? Is it a 4-2-4? What is it? What I love about G uh, Cody Hakpo is he can go deep. He can become that striker type. He can be that transitional player that brings it up. He did that a lot. In Holland, he did that a lot before he arrived at Liverpool, of kind of picking the ball up, driving in, bringing other people into play. I love that from him. I still feel like it's very much underappreciated in the side. I still feel like it's something that he only really gets his opportunity to stretch his legs every couple of games. There's a lot of times where it feels like he's being asked to do a lot of the 
doggies or a lot more of the, hey, you need to fit into the team rather than be this individual. But the moment where he does get to open up, the moment where he did get his goal, the moment where he did get to combine with others, similar to, similar to Nunez where it's like, open your legs up, be a little bit freer, don't feel the need to do this role which facilitates for others, do be maybe a little bit more selfish. You see the real quality in the players, both Nunez and in Hakpo as well. And I guess that was the frustration for Liverpool after the weekend. Klopp played a system where it would then rely on some quality finishing from one of the guys who was up front, and it just didn't come through against Manchester United. Honestly, I'd sacrifice a cup run for a league run any time, and I'd sacrifice, you know, going through in the cup against Fulham. You know, I think that's a great game, and I think it's a really nice tie, but I would sacrifice all of that to win against Manchester United and to push ourselves on in the league. Having said that, still a very long season. You'll see where it goes. Uh, I, I, Liverpool pretty much controlled this start to finish. I feel like you learn more from a United game than you do from a West Ham game. But if you actually balance the two out, if you put them both on the scales, you probably come away with this idea of Klopp not differing necessarily from volume of shots. Liverpool having the assuredness and the trust in their team that even after a you know, they didn't score immediately when they came into this game. It wasn't like, hey, we're creating loads of clear-cut chances. And I still feel like people are slightly misplacing the analysis by saying Liverpool didn't create loads of clear-cut chances against United. We know certain players in the old Liverpool team in the 4-3-3 with Mane, Firmino, Salah used to be much more volume shooters. That was Salah, that was Mane. It was probably a couple of people behind them as well. This team is much more of like, there is volume, but in a different fashion. Ball movement, but in a different fashion. They want to focus in different areas. Where did loads of the goals come from this evening? Edge of the box. Where did loads of goals come from this evening? Liverpool moving that back line around, making little runs, which were used as diversions away from the actual shooter. Sobersly had space. Uh, Curtis Jones had space. There were overlapping runs, which were utilised by the likes of people like Darwin Nunez. And then when it, it, basically in the end, West Ham was so stretched front to back, long ways along the pitch. It meant that Liverpool just had so much space to operate in. Salah could do that breaking thing. Nunez could get his assist, which by the way, I love the hookup between him and Curtis Jones. And Jones just had so much space to run into, could just slalom through their defence, doing exactly what he's naturally very good at. That's something that he's been coached with from Klopp, but also something that existed before Jürgen came in. And that's what Jürgen's very good at, is getting this system and then allowing these moments of, hey, you're a good player naturally, take advantage of that in this moment, do this, do that. No one feels like, oh, I'm going to get hooked if I play my natural game for a moment or do this. But as long as they're playing the system, as long as there is some sort of nod towards Klopp on the sideline and knowing you've fulfilled all these other roles, get forward, do what you need to do. I love that kind of what felt like a natural fluidity to the team this evening that came from Jones and Elliot just picking it up, moving forward. Elliot had loads of space, could have scored loads of goals. Uh, there were also lovely moments, by the way, when like Connor Bradley came on, where there was like that moment where he put it around the corner for Salah and Salah was away and it could have been a goal for Liverpool. It, it shows that there is like an understanding which is being formed within the team. And United made, it would be so easy to conclude that United made that difficult, Liverpool panicked or whatever. It isn't that like, I mean, obviously it is that to an extent, like United snubbed Liverpool, United blunted them, whatever you want to say, right? And that's like, you know, credit to United for doing that. I think that's really good, especially when Liverpool have been on such a run at Anfield. West Ham didn't really do that. Um, and I, I feel like this is good prep for the Arsenal game. I also feel like the combination of United and West Ham is a great prep for the Arsenal game. It remind, reminds Liverpool... There is defensive frailty there. A great moment going down the other end. Kwanzaa had pretty much a flawless night, but for the Gerard Bowen moment. Loads of moments where he felt like more of a wall, where it felt like if there was a through ball, he read it, he picked it up. That's not always been the case in that Liverpool back line. Sometimes there have been moments where it felt like they've been caught out. Smart bits of play get around them. Cute ideas seem to catch them out in some weird fashion and someone suddenly threw and everyone's on recovery runs. Very few recovery runs this evening for Liverpool. Very few times where they felt like they needed to kind of, um, oh, wow, they got us. Whereas actually in the past, especially this season, I don't feel like we've seen that as much as maybe we'd like to. Endo sitting a little bit deeper, the back line pushing up, it creates a bit more of a solid unit, harder to play through. There's loads of space for Liverpool to quash the opposition, get on them, 
just like close the space, win it back super quick and have it going down the field really fast. And I really like that. Uh, criticism wise, I still think there's some sloppy passes. Criticism wise, I guess if you're picking nits, then it's like, you know, there's still bits where you can improve if you're Joel Concert. There's still bits where you can improve. I enjoyed the Curtis Jones role because I felt it looked a bit more like the England role they had him playing in, where it was a bit more like pick it up deep, move forward, play in combination with other people. There was almost a Fabinho-like quality to it when he was in possession. Because I remember a couple of times last season where I saw Fabinho playing and I was like, oh, you're, you're trying to combine. You're trying to make something happen here. And I like that from Curtis Jones. He became a bit of a fulcrum for the play. I enjoyed that. Personally, do I care about Darwin Nunez not scoring in however many games running up to this? Do I care about Cody Hakpo only getting a goal every couple of games? Yeah, of course I care. But like, if the system is maximizing in Liverpool, maybe it's not maximizing. Maybe maximizing is getting Nunez score. It is getting Hakpo score. It is pleasing those strikers. It is helping them fulfill what goals they have for the season. But overall, no. Like, we were only made to question that because United sat so deep, because they were so conservative, because they didn't come to win, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on the game. Let me know. I'm very pleased with a lot of what was going on in the movement and uh, overall in the performance. It was a great way to kind of lift that from everything else. Uh, that had happened over the weekend. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll chat to you again in a little while. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in a little while. Much love. Bye.